Welcome back to our Avon Rescue series featuring Chris Hollier. He's built over 100 cars, was a kit car manufacturer, and editor of Kit Car Magazine. In other words, he really knows his stuff. In our last episode, Chris did a survey of the Avon and pointed out some of the improvements he had made, which focused on making the car driver friendly and safe in a competitive environment. The Avon, as Chris found it, was a bit of a tight squeeze. He is six foot two inches tall and the pedals and footwell needed modification to help make him fit. There are loads of other safety and comfort mods in the video, so please feel free to check out the series link in the video description. This week, Chris will continue with the project and you will learn about a variety of kit car building tricks, including fiberglass body fitment, aero screen construction, and setting up a driver's dash. Hey, Speed Demons, here's some Avon factoids for you. Did you know that Tiger Racing was created in 1989 by Jim Dudley? His mission was to create cars that combined the thrill of racing with the practicality of road driving. One of the earliest models to emerge from Tiger's stable was the Tiger Avon. Most people know the Tiger Avon to be a beloved Tiger sports and racing cars model. It is recognized as a Tiger racing creation, but not everyone knows that the Avon actually originated from the Phoenix Automotive Avon Sprint. The Avon Sprint was a notable little kit car from the late 1970s and early 1980s. It was a lightweight sports car based on the Lotus 7 style formula. After acquiring the project, Tiger Sports and Racing Cars made significant modifications to the chassis and suspension to suit their own standards and performance needs. Now you know a bit more about Avon history, so let's head over to Chris's shed and see what he's been up to. Well, good morning, everybody. <coughs> Welcome back to the next little bit of the Tiger Avon build. As you can, as blindingly obvious, I've been quite busy. The body is now on. Um, I've still got a few more finishing bits to do on the body. Bonnet catches still need to go on, but most of the brackishery is there now. Uh, like in the colour. When I first saw it in yellow, I thought, mm hmm. But now I can actually see it in the flesh. I'm really liking it. I started doing a lot more mock-up as well on dash panel because dashboards are my thing. I really like them to be right. And because it's such a shallow dashboard on this, I couldn't really get the shape I wanted. And that's what this is all about. I'll show you a bit more in detail later on, but just so you know what's going on here. So since we've last had a look at the car, um, the body is now held in place with temporary rivets. Some people call them Clicos. These are a similar style, but much cheaper, like a little thumb screw version. Um, so I've lined everything up. One of the real difficult parts I've found this time is getting the radiator to fit inside the nose cone because it's such a tiny nose cone and it's hard work getting it in there. But we're in now and I'll again, I'll show you. I can take the nose cone off in a minute and I can show you the details of what I've done and how I've done it. Not to turn it into a build manual again, but just to give you, it might give you an idea. If you're struggling with something yourself, it might give you a clue as to a way around. The engine is still out of the car at the moment. Um, but the wiring loom is in, running front to rear. So underneath the engine, underneath the bonnet at the moment, the, the wiring loom is all over the place because I need the engine back in place to be able to cut all the wires down to the right length so everything looks nice and neat. All the brake lines are in now and all tight, so I'm ready to bleed the brakes. The steering is all done and all connected. So yeah, making really good progress. And if things carry on the way they're going, yeah, we should be done within the time frame I was hoping for. Let's just hope the, the weather and everything else holds and I can just keep going. So the follow on from here, after we get this one all wrapped up, will be to get the engine back in, get the engine built first, sorry, that will be the next episode. 
and then get the engine back in. So I'm not going to waffle on too much this time. I'll leave it as just a brief introduction and then I can get the camera handheld and I can show you all the details. Now here we are underneath the bonnet. You can see if I lift the clutch cable out the way that the brake lines are now in running down the back so they're away from the exhaust manifold and along the chassis rail so they shouldn't catch too much heat. Now the clutch cable is a nice easy fit that's just straight in the front of the pedal mechanism. If you have a look down this side this uses wires everywhere. Don't pay any attention to that at the moment that's just getting ready for the engine to go in so I can start trimming everything to length. If we look just here, that's one of the bonnet catch brackets. And at the back, there's another one there. And you can also see these little temporary rivets. All they are is a little thumb screw version of a Clico. So rather than having a pair of applying pliers to put them in, they literally just screw in and then screw down tight. Right now let's have a look at this aero screen and dash top. I like 1930s asymmetric styling. I don't think that everything should look the same, especially on a car that's going to have predominantly one person in it. So I've gone slightly higher on the driver's side, slightly lower on the passenger side. And if we come around here, you'll see the reason why. If I put you about where my head is, you can see... If I straighten the steering wheel up, that from here you can see all pretty much all of the rev counter and speedo, and the other gauges off to the side along with the switch gear. Now I was saying earlier about a very shallow dashboard. To try and get all those dials in that little bit of space is really almost impossible. I can't extend the dash down because I've got the remote gear change lever which goes between the lever you can see and what comes out the gearbox when the engine and gearbox goes back in. So that's why I've decided to go with this aero screen. It's all made out of cardboard at the moment and the support panel underneath it is a piece of old MDF flooring which has been cut to size to give some support for the cardboard. Now this is a work in progress. And hopefully in the next little while, it should come to fruition. If we look down inside the body here, you can see I can still see the inside of the fiberglass body. And I'm intending to put some black carpet in there to make it look less like a bare body shell rested on the chassis. Because I don't want to go to the extra space and effort of putting aluminium panels down the inside and trying to trim them. I'd like to keep it full width in here if I can. Now I've not had to do much trimming to the bodywork, but if I move around the corner a little bit, I have trimmed out a bit more in this corner here because my knee, originally it came across here and my knee was hitting there. So I've actually trimmed it out and I've matched it up on the other side. And if we look at where the body fits up on this side here, rather than trying to overlap this section of fiberglass over here, it made it ridiculously tight and it wouldn't fit. So I've trimmed it in so it fits down there. The body's also been trimmed around the feet of the roll bar here because I wanted this to be a solid metal to metal contact. I didn't want the fiberglass in the middle. And then this temporary bolt here is to align the rear end of the bodywork. So when it comes apart and goes back on again, it goes back in the same place. You can also see now how the rear legs of the roll bar are working. And they're coming down so that this plate sits on top of the fiberglass and the other strut comes up from underneath and it bolts through the two to hold them together. And it makes this corner of the body work really rigid when it's back together again. 
And we've got another whole mess of wiring in here, waiting to be connected to everything. Once I get the body finally fitted, then I can go through and I can start clipping everything in place. I'll be intrigued for some feedback on this dash design. Everyone's going to have an opinion. And you're all allowed one. Whether I agree with it or not is a different matter. But for me, where I need to sit and how I need it to work, I wanted to be able to see everything really clearly and make everything work. That's why I've gone, it's more of a conventional modern car design with a speed arm rev counter behind the steering wheel. And the reason I've done that is because it works. You haven't got to keep looking too far away from straight ahead to be able to keep an eye on everything. And the other little bit I'm going to do, if you look just to the left of the steering wheel here, see that little black circle? That's where the shift light's going to go. So again, I've got a lovely easy means, rather than having to look at the rev counter and find out how many revs I've got, it's just going to have a shift light in there, so when it gets up to 6,000 revs, shift light comes on. It's in your peripheral vision and you can change down straight away. Okay, so I've had the body off now, so I could put the black carpet on the inside of the body there, so it ends up behind the chassis rails, as you can see. I know it's a little bit dark, but hopefully you can pick it out. I've still got a little blanking panel to do from underneath the wheel arch, just in the back corner there. And now I've added carpet on the back bulkhead and then down this side of the tunnel it's just so much easier to put the carpet on the tunnel and the footwells without the body on so it seemed like the perfect time to do it now the stuff I've used is not actually car carpet at all this stuff is sold as van lining carpet it's a small short tuft it hasn't got a woven backing or anything else like that, so it actually flexes really nicely in both directions. Sticks on well with double-sided glue, or sorry, not double-sided, um, spray glue. It's super light, and it should be reasonably easy to keep clean. And I've also got the bonnet catches on now. And yes, yes, I do know they're not IVA compliant. But they were also £14 for four. So on the budget, because we're only going racing, they'll do quite nicely for now. And if it comes to an IVA test in the future, we'll have to change them. With the bent bonnet off, you can see how I've managed to put the pins in the corners. And I've slotted the top hole here so they'll adjust up and down. And I've slotted these two holes so they'll move backwards and forwards. And then obviously you've got a screw thread on the pin here so they'll wind in and out. So the body is now on for the last time, as you can see it's all riveted down along the edges. So everything's where it needs to be. I still haven't hooked the steering back up again yet, but other than that, it's all in place. Now let's see if I can show you what's happening with this radiator. If we look in here, you can see that the top of the radiator is just about touching the inside of the nose cone. And it's the Tiger supplied radiator. It's hard up against that top chassis rail. And it's pretty hard up against the steering rack. It's not actually touching, it's about two mil away, but it's almost touching. So I'll go around the front and show you what's happening. So in here you can see it's sitting in reasonably well. 
bottom of the radiator hangs out the bottom of the nose cone just by a little bit. So what I'm going to do is where that's hanging out, I'm going to disguise that with a number plate mount or a little lip spoiler. And also I can put some heavy steel inside it to give it a bit of protection. Now here we are with the nose cone off. And you can see I've made this thin sheet metal frame to actually hold the radiator. And two inch by or 25 by 3 mil straps to hold the radiator. And these fit on the front of the chassis with two little bolts which go through this bracket here. And if we go up a little bit, you might just be able to see the back of the bolt where it sticks through. Now these two brackets here, this one and this one, are to support the nose cone. Originally, there was one right in the middle, right here, which came off the front of the chassis at about the same height as those out two outside ones. And it wouldn't allow the radiator to sit in place. No matter what I tried, I couldn't get it to go in. So I cut the centre one off. And I've made those two removable ones to go on the sides. So I've got a lovely big electric fan. So hopefully with that size radiator, the fan and a header tank, we should be able to keep the Pinto nice and cool. So as you can see, we've got some good progress this time. Actually looking like a car now. Yay, at last, rather than just a chassis with some wheels on it. Um, front wings are just rested on for now. Wing stays will be part of the next se session. Um, but the big one next time will be getting the engine built. Built, detailed, painted, and hopefully back in the hole. Hope there's been a few little trips, tips and tricks in here that you've seen that might be of use to you. So it wasn't supposed to be a build manual, it's supposed to be just what I can do cheaply as possible, hence things like the bonnet catches, to try and keep the price down so we can get the car together and work it and get it out there and use it and then worry about a lot of the other details later. If we need to go for an IVA, we can change the bonnet catches. If we want to go faster, we can add some more stuff to the engine. But they can all be done afterwards. Let's just get it built, running and using for now. And that way it won't be another 20 years before this poor old thing sees the tarmac. Okay, so I'll see you next time, hopefully in a couple of weeks. You never know, we might have the engine in the hole. That'd be nice. See you soon. Thanks a lot, Chris. That was absolutely fabulous as usual. We hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something new. If you liked what you saw, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future shows. Also, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Drop a comment below if you have any questions, suggestions or ideas for future projects. We're always excited to see what you guys come up with. Thanks again and we'll see you at 7 Spot. So yeah, so I've had the car for, since the beginning of June of last year um, and, uh, and it's, it's never really let me down, um, it's, ever, it's really really fun, um, love driving it, uh, love the colour obviously, red and black, um, and it's just sort of got everything on it.